and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with My Security Media and publishers of the Australia in Space magazine. Today we're joined by Dr. Amy Parker. She is the director with CSIRO's Centre for Earth Observation and that is exactly what we're going to talk about. Without further ado, Dr. Amy Parker from Perth. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Chris. Nice to be with you. Great. Um, Earth observation, it's a real focus uh, for the Australian Space Agency. They've got a roadmap uh, in this domain uh, and you're now the director of CSIRO's Centre for Earth Observation. So uh, it's great to have, uh, I'm a Perth boy, so it's great to have uh, you there from Perth. Um, and there's a couple of ways we can go. We can, you've got a fascinating background originally from the UK uh, and uh, also associated with Curtin University uh, as well. Um, maybe a background to the centre uh, on Earth observation, and then we'll dive into a couple of the key projects, uh, particularly the Novasar uh, satellite as well. So, Amy, yeah, wherever you want to start, really, is uh, maybe a little bit about the centre. Thanks, Chris. So, yeah, you're right. I am um, I'm originally from the UK. As I'm sure you can all tell by the accent. Um, and I've always been a user of Earth observation data, which is how I ended up uh, where I am today. Um, and that had traditionally been for um, looking at natural hazard applications. So really interested in geophysical hazards, um, which uses a really uses a specific type of Earth observation data um, called synthetic aperture radar. And the satellite that you just mentioned in your intro there, Novasar, is, is one of those satellites. Um, so the Centre for Earth Observation at CSIRO um, really represents a lot of the work that's done by many, many different scientists. So there are over 80 scientists using this type of information in the work that they do. And the centre really provides a focal point for a lot of that research. Um, and it also um, provides um, a lot of international representation. So particularly through what we call the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites. Um, through the centre, CSIRO is represented um, at that forum. Um, the centre also is um, providing fundamental Earth observation activities and research, particularly in the field of calibration and validation. So that's really around assuring the quality of the sensors, the measurements and the observations that we, that we derive from those sensors. And then in addition to the calibration and validation of the data, so ensuring that the data is, is valid and true. Um, we have contributed significantly to global developments in the way that we analyse Earth observation data at scale. And that was really through a partnership with Geoscience Australia um, on what was called the Australian Geoscience um, Data Cube. And that's now become um, a global initiative called the Open Data Cube. And it allows us to really um, exploit the advantages of cloud computing and decades of data that we now have access to. You know, we really do now have um, an overwhelming quantity of this Earth observation data that, that's being made available. So how we can extract maximum value from that is really at the forefront of our activities in the centre. Well, what's some of the real uh, sort of applications of this data and that we're using day to day? Obviously, things like weather is, is a sort of a key key one, but what are some of the sort of the breakthroughs uh, in the application of data? Because I think crunching those numbers, we've now got the computing power to do that. So the capability to turn that data almost from real time uh, into an application. What are, what are some of the standouts for you? Some of the standouts are really in the kind of the ag space in agriculture and how we can use um, the earth observation imagery to provide um, you know, really at scale crop monitoring classification um, and looking at how we can optimize um, um, processes in agriculture. And then using these really long time series that have been accumulating in the background um, you know, for decades to then actually be able to track some of the degradation of our environments over time and look at some of the, the impacts of our changing climate. You know, where we have these very long time series is really where we're able to, to look back in time and yeah. make um, you know, very real um, observations of what's been occurring. I tell you, are you working with the likes of, say, the Pawsey Centre there as well in, in Perth? 
We don't work directly with the Causey Center um, at the moment, but um, I sit actually on the advisory board of what's called the Australian Space Data Analysis Facility, um, which is which is um, kind of hosted at Causey. And really in, in that, um, that center, that facility, uh, we're looking at Earth observation applications at scale as well. Okay, and maybe tell us about the ground station here in Alice Springs uh, and how that's been structured. It's a wholly owned uh, Aboriginal company, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. So um, we obtained uh, a 10% share in the Novasar satellite on behalf of Australia, and we operate that as a national facility, which means that the data is made free and open for the benefit of science and research. Um, and different user groups can apply to have data collected over their region of interest for um, specific scientific applications. And previously, that data was being downloaded um, in the UK through the satellite operator, um, a company called SSTL. And what we've done this year is to actually transition that so that it's now um, a wholly Australian um, operation, which means that we task the data from Australia and we are now downlinking it directly through this ground station um, that's operated by the Centre for Appropriate Technology Satellite Enterprises in um, Alice Springs. So it's really great to be having that data land directly on our soil. And I, I take it you mentioned 80 researchers. Are they CSIRO researchers or are they academic researchers around different universities as well? Yeah, we're not limited to universities. So universities, um, it's open to industry to use. We have some right. um, industry groups that have applied for data as well. So it's really um, an open facility. And we have, I think, now over 3,000 images that are available for anybody to, to view and download on our data portal as well. Is there a cost involved in that? No cost to users. It's wow. part of um, our management of um, national research facilities for the benefit of Australian science and research. So no cost implications for users. The other one I had on the website was some recent projects in Vietnam. Uh, yeah, just tell us what we're doing in uh, the ASEAN region. Yeah, absolutely. So back in 2019, there was a report that was commissioned by the Australian government that really looked at the economic value um, of Earth observation across the, um, the Asia Pacific region. And um, one of the big outcomes from that report was the significant additional economic value that comes through um, increased cooperation across the region. And sort of towards this end, we've been really working with that data cube technology that elevates Earth observation from having specialist software on your computer and you know, lots of time um, consuming data downloads to pushing everything onto the open cloud, which means that you just need a desktop or a laptop and an internet connection to be able to, to really do the same work. And um, we're implementing this data cube technology on AWS, Amazon Web Services in Singapore, and operating that um, for different institutions in Southeast Asia. So in July, we hosted a hackathon where we invited along um, ASEAN and Australian participants to come together and innovate around using Earth observation to look at um, solutions for different climate change issues and monitoring of those issues. So it's been a really interesting an interesting exercise. Um, still ongoing, we'll be hosting some, some further events to showcase some of the outcomes of that activity, but it's been fantastic to start to build um, those closer linkages between Australian groups and ASEAN counterparts through the use right. of the data tool. Yeah, look, I think definitely our partners in the ASEAN region, that's where Australia's strength should be, I think, uh, and it's a fascinating region as well. When you look at it from an Earth observation, there's a lot going on uh, all the time. Um, what's your outlook, I suppose, not necessarily for maybe 2023, but sort of over the next five years, you are on a on a roadmap, as we mentioned with the Australian Space Agency. Uh, any sort of project milestones that you anticipate uh, in the near term? I think one of the, the really interesting um, aspects that we're sort of focusing on at CSIRO is in particular missions, satellite missions that are focused around Australia's specific needs and that fill a gap in, in the satellites that are currently available. Um, and so we've been working on what's called the Watch Australia mission with partners at the SmartSats CRC, 
um, and other institutions in Australia, really looking at how satellite data could be um, tailored to look at our specific water quality issues that we face in Australia, because currently it's really a gap in the current um, the observables that are available from other satellites. So I think that's one of the really interesting I and mean, exciting things that is highlighted in the roadmap. And then one of our biggest sort of challenges and, and call to actions is really looking at that development of the workforce. So the future workforce, but also looking at what our current um, you know, workforce is and how skills in other sectors are transferable into, into the space sector around the, you know, the analysis of Earth observation data, um, large scale computing, and then the, you know, the engineering upstream side of developing those sensors and those, those satellite platforms. What are, what are some of those key skills that you think uh, will be needed or might be short? And I, I suppose another observation you might have is from the UK into, the, the, into Australia as well. Uh, we're obviously working closely uh, with the UK on the space bridge. But yeah, just the skill transfers and the skill, the key skills that you think we should be paying more attention to, to, to upskill that future workforce. Yeah, and I do, you, you mentioned that point about moving from the UK, and I think that it, we are lucky because it's currently, a, you know, very top, space is very much a topic in Australia. It's viewed internationally as, you know, an up and coming space player, a lot of activity happening, a lot of excitement. Um, and I think that that is attractive for people to, um, you know, to perhaps think about relocating to Australia. So I think that that's something that's currently working in our favour, but really promoting those basic STEM skills um, amongst our school kids, but perhaps doing it in, in less traditional ways. You know, one of the things I always think about with Earth observation data is it's so visual that it's quite a good way to capture the attention of young people, but really every pixel in there is a number. Um, yeah. And so it, it is in its essence, a giant matrix and it needs maths to be able to solve it. But we've got the computing power. I think that's maybe that's one other thing we might finish off on. The, it's almost the perfect storm, isn't it, really, with our observation capabilities and also the computing power and the cloud environment as well allows that connectivity and mobility. Just how exciting do you think that the current industry is uh, and as we project out to 2030? Yeah, I think um, a lot of uh, sort of those who've been working in Earth observation for a long time um, you know, it, it's, it takes almost a new mindset to change the way you work, perhaps from being on your desktop to really thinking that you now at your fingertips have the, have the power to be able to, um, you know, to look at vast amounts of data um, on continental scales. So I think it's, it is kind of a change in mindset that is, is being, um, that is taking place currently in the sector and really scaling things up. Right. Well, hopefully we'll see you in Adelaide. We're, we're just about to head to the, uh, to the Space Forum with the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. We mentioned the UK and the Australia Space Bridge. We've got an event in London on the 18th of October, uh, a morning uh, breakfast there. So I'll give those two events a plug, given that we've still got a, a few weeks to go. But Dr. Amy Parker, uh, Director with the CSIRO Centre for Earth Observation, great to have you with us. Uh, fascinating field that you're in and thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you and look, look forward to seeing you all in Adelaide. Great, thanks Amy.